Hi everyone, this is Miss Tom with chapter 9.1.1, Solving One Variable Inequalities. Alright everybody, so our job is to solve one variable inequalities and we are going to first look at what an inequality means. So this first one is an inequality and it's inequality because it has this less than or equal to symbol. And our job is we are going to find out the differences between an equation and a one variable inequality. Now you're probably looking at this picture thinking, oh my gosh, I see a bunch of differences. One obvious difference, do you notice? One obvious difference is right here. Actually, I'm going to choose a different color. Right here. That pocket is not here. Also, you probably noticed this guy's filled in over here, but not over here. All right, those are the couple of differences that I noticed. But with the equation and the inequality here, do you notice a difference? There is a difference right here. This and this. Do you see how there's a difference? Our main focus of this chapter is going to be inequalities. The reason why is because equations, especially in this right-hand side, equations have one solution. Whereas on this inequality, it has infinite solutions. And the reason why it has infinite solutions is because we have an inequality, not an equation. And inequalities mean all the things in between. So it includes many, many different solutions. If that didn't make sense to you, I'm going to make it a little bit more clear in this first example. All right, so we've got 2x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 3. Let's remind ourselves, I know that some of you mostly do know this. This is the greater than symbol. Because look at how it's like, it's like facing the same direction as the G. You guys see that? Yeah? OK. And then this guy is going to be less. So how many solutions are there? Well, let's talk about this. Well, first of all, if I put 1 here, is it going to work? 2 minus 5, nope, that's not going to work. 5, 2, 2, nope, that's not going to work. 3, no, a, yeah, let's go bigger. Let's go 10. Go bigger, go home, all right? Let's go 10. 2 times 10 minus 5, is that greater than 3? Yes. What about 200? That also works because 2 times 200 minus 5 is greater than 3. What if we went thousand? Does that work? Yes, it does. Um, and you'll probably notice that there's a lot of other answers that also work. There are infinite solutions. But what is the smallest solution for x? Well, that's known as the boundary point. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the boundary point by doing this. First, we're splitting it just like we would with a regular equation. I want to give you guys a pro tip. A pro tip is to always make your x variable positive. You really don't want to deal with a negative because then you're going to have to deal with a lot of things that we're going to talk about later in the chapter. But for now, let's make sure that x is always positive, okay? Just like your mindset, be positive. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to add 5 to both sides. Then we're going to notice this goes by over here. We've got 2x is greater than or equal to 8. Then we're going to notice that we can divide by 2. What we do to 1, do to the other. So we get x is greater than or equal to 4. So notice how there's more than one solution. Usually, in this case, we'd say, oh, there's one solution, and the solution is 4. However, we're saying that x is anything greater than or equal to 4. So let's write that in words. x is greater than or equal to 4. 
<laughs> okay, to four. All right. And how do you write that as an inequality? We wrote it earlier. This. Okay. So what I'm going to do is we're going to first remind ourselves of a couple of things. We're going to draw some emojis here. You guys ready for these emojis? Let's draw the greater than and the less than symbol. I'm going to do that in red, actually. These guys. And we're going to draw that with an open circle because it means it's not equal to. And over here, we're going to draw this guy with the little inequality eyes. And that is filled in because that means equal to. So knowing that we have those notes, we're going to circle our boundary point. This is our boundary point right here. Four is what we have. Are we going to fill it in? Yes, we are, because there's an equal to symbol. Let's fill it in. Then we're going to be like, oh, it's greater than four. What are numbers greater than four? Is this number greater than four? Are these greater than four? Nope, those are not greater than four. What's greater than four? Oh, five is greater than four. This guy, is six greater than four? Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a little arrow and indicate all of those things are greater than four, and there are infinite solutions, which means our arrow is going to extend to infinity and beyond in this direction to the right. You got that? Did you get it right? Okay. Next one is we're going to go over here. There's many different solutions for this one as well. 3 minus 2x is less than 1. If we put in 1 here, that's not going to work. What about 2? Oh, 2 does work. Yes, 2 works. What about 3? 3 minus 6. Yes. What about four? Three minus eight. Oh, yes. Okay, looks like all these numbers work here. Sweet. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to solve just like we did the other problem. We're going to draw that line. Then we're going to notice that we can solve for x. Now, my pro tip, pro tip. The reason why I'm, I'm making these videos sometimes is because Math teachers don't always give the pro tips, right? Make your x positive. Positive x. Go for the positivity. So right here, do you guys see how it says 2x is negative? I would suggest to do this. Add 2x to both sides. What I do to one, I do to the other. Then you're going to be like, oh, this is a zero pair. There we go. And then you have 3 is less than 1 plus 2x. Then you're going to subtract 1. What do you do one side? Do the other. We're going to notice this cancels out. We've got 2x over here, 2 over here. And then we divide by 2, so we get x here and 1 here. Alrighty, we got it. So how do you write this in words? 1 is less than x. Or if you read it this way, x is greater than 1. So I'm going to just go ahead and write that x is greater than 1. And if you're a little confused by that, whichever side the inequality, like the little alligator symbol, is facing, that means that that's the bigger value, right? So since it's facing the x, x is greater than 1. And then we're going to go ahead and write that just like that. All I'm doing is I read it, and I'm writing the inequality, and saying x is greater than 1. Remember, notice how this inequality here is an regular inequality. There's no equal to symbol there, so we're going to circle the one. Am I going to fill it in? No, I'm not going to fill it in because there's no equal to symbol here. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to leave it empty. And then it says x is greater than 1. What are some numbers that are greater than 1? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All of those are greater than 1. So since those are all greater than 1, we are going to go ahead and draw arrow facing that direction because all of those values are greater than 1. All right, here we go. What we're going to do is we're going to finish up with these two. Again, I want to remind you guys, pause the video if you don't understand something, and then you can also ask during office hours, okay? Here we go. We're going to solve it just like an equation. Slice it. What do we notice? On the left-hand side, we can go to the minus 3. We can actually use the distributive property. So that's negative 3x. Again, I box this minus 3 because I want you to show that it's distributing a negative 3. And that negative 3 is distributing to this negative 1. And a negative times a negative is a positive. Yes! Then, we're going to go over here. We have x minus 7. Remember the pro tip. Keep x positive. How do you keep x positive? Well, there's a negative there. How do you get rid of a negative? Well, you do the opposite. You do the inverse. So we're going to add 3x to both sides. What we do to one, we do to the other. Then we're going to notice this goes by. And so we end up on this side. I actually didn't add this. I should have added it. Sorry, my bad. 2 plus 3 is going to be 5. All right. And then over here, we're going to keep the inequality x plus 3x, oh, x plus 3x, that's 4x minus 7. We want to get rid of that minus 7 to isolate the variable, so we're going to add plus 7 to both sides. What we do to one, we do to the other. This is going to be a zero pair, yes, bye! Then we have 4x, inequalities here, 12. Then we're going to divide by 4. What we do to one side, we do to the other. And so we get x. Here's the inequality. And 3. Yay! So far, so good. How'd you guys do? Did you pause the video and see if you could get it by yourself? Hopefully you did. Now we got to read this inequality words. Which way is the inequality facing? It's facing the 3, which means the 3 is greater than or equal to x. Or we could say x is less than or equal to 3. And so let's write that down. x is less than or equal to 3. And with our inequality value there, we're going to go, okay, x is less than or equal to 3. Where's 3? Here's 3. Do we fill it in? Yes, we do. Why? Because there's inequality there. And then we're going to say it's less than or equal to 3, so it goes in this direction. Why? Because 2 is less than 3, 1 is less than 3, 0 is less than 3. All of those are less than 3. Okay. Now. There we go. Um, over on the other side. Let's draw the line here. In this problem, we really want to combine like terms first. So we've got the 9k that we have to combine. And then negative 4 plus 1, that's negative 3. Then we've got 2k plus 7k. Oh, that's 9k. Minus Hold, hold on, hold on, 9k minus 3 and 9k minus 3. You guys know what's happening? Okay, if you don't notice, I'll tell you. But if you notice, you're like, oh, this is happening. Okay, well, first, I'm going to take away the 9ks. All right. It's kind of like 9 gag, right, you guys? You guys know what that is? Okay. Anyway, um, these go out. Negative 3 is less than or equal to. Negative 3, is that true? Yes. You can also add a 3 to both sides. This goes by. And then we're going to notice it says, oh, is this true? 
Yes. And anytime you see zeros, you know those zeros mean there are infinite solutions because this is true. This is always true no matter what x value or k value you have. So in this situation, we've really got a solution that could be anything. It could be anything. And because it could be anything, this whole thing, I don't know why it's not letting me, this whole thing needs to be highlighted. Okay, it's finally letting me highlight. This whole thing is our solution. Everything is our solution. All of these guys. All right, and so that is the end of the lesson, you guys. The closure, you guys can see, when is a solution a single point? When is it a single point? Well, we kind of went over it in the first example. It's a single point when you say x is equal to something, like when x is equal to, and it's not responding again. When it says x is equal to something, like x is equal to two, that means that's a single little point. That's only one solution. Well, what about, could you write an equality so that the solution is all numbers? How would that look on the number line? All numbers. Remember when we had something that looked exactly the same? like this because everything ended up canceling out and we ended up getting zero is less than or equal to zero like this right when you see this you know there are infinite solutions and what does it look like on the number line i'm going to show you with the highlighter Looks like, if it'll let me, for some reason, the smart board is not working that well today. It would actually just kind of look like a full line. It would just look like a full line like you saw in the highlighted picture. All of this. Alright, thanks so much for watching, you guys, and I'll see you guys next time.